let's look at another basic rational function, which is 1 over x squared. This guy's <coughs> going to behave just a little bit differently than we saw for 1 over <coughs> x, so let's make a t-table of values. If I plug in negative 2, what do I get? I get 1 fourth. Not only does this guy do the reciprocal, but he also squares it. So the reciprocal of negative 1 half is excuse me, the reciprocal of negative 2 is negative 1 half, but squared gives you 1 fourth. What if I plug in negative 1? 1. If I plug in negative 1 half, what do you get? Well, I get 4. If I plug in 0, what happens? It's undefined. What about the rest of these? I plug in 1 half. I'm going to get 4, plug in 1, I get 1, and then if I plug in 2, I get 1 fourth. Okay. Now let's plot these points and make sure everything lines up well. Negative 2, it's not going to be below like the last guy, it's going to be at 1 fourth, so somewhere right about here. Negative 1, 1, and when I'm here at negative 1 half, I'm all the way up here at 4. And at 0, I'm undefined, so what do you think that means I have there? It means I've got a vertical asymptote. Okay. And then on the other side of this, I get the rest of my points. 1 half, 4, 1, 1, 2, 1 fourth. What type of symmetry do you see right now with what I have? y-axis symmetry. Okay, so let's just connect these dots. This is a tough guy to get, but notice that he gets super steep here. And then he gets flat very, very quickly, because if you think about these numbers that you're plugging in here, like if I plug in 5, or negative 5, the reciprocal of negative 5 is negative 1 fifth. If I square that, I get 1 25th. 1 25th for all of those Paying attention to your decimals is 0 0.04. He is a tiny. <laughs> He's like a me, a mini Mario. <laughs> it's like my children. One of them is mini Mario, the other one is Super Mario. There's no like regular Mario. Gigantor and the diminutive one. That's who we have here. Now, looking at this, do you think that I mean, clearly we have this vertical asymptote. Do we have a horizontal asymptote? Uh, no. No. Yeah, no. no. A horizontal asymptote is where as you go out to either positive or negative infinity, your graph starts to get closer and closer to one particular number. Zero, Zero right? So this guy also has this horizontal asymptote right there. Now, what we said about horizontal asymptotes, you can cross those. But what they mean is that as you go out to positive or negative infinity, you start to get closer and closer and closer to that. So they can really You can cross horizontal asymptotes. This guy doesn't cross his horizontal asymptote, though. He can get as close to it as he wants to, but he's never going to cross it. But there will be other examples, like the one I showed you in the other video, sine of x divided by x. It oscillates but it starts to dampen the oscillation, which means it's not bouncing higher and higher. It gets lower and lower and lower. So eventually, it's going to be very difficult to see those oscillations unless you were to zoom in and see how it keeps infinitely crossing. The sine wave is over the x-axis, yes? The sine wave crosses, 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 crosses. So you're saying as it gets smaller and smaller, it's such that, I mean, looking it's, at it's, it it's gonna keep scale, it would be bouncing within the width of the x-axis anyway. Right, like here. Okay. Yeah, if you do that sine of x over x, to your human eyes, it's going to become flat coming out here. Yeah. But of course, you can always zoom in however closely you want to, because after all, this is mathematics. We don't have to worry about resolution. Mathematics, you can make your own resolution. I like mathematics. It's super awesome. And here's your graph. 
Uh, oh, what? 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 It's like the Atari. It, it does. <laughs> it I'm surprised you didn't say that already. I guess I'm not as old as some people. 